Welcome back everybody. Uh, today's video is going to be about how to paint and install a polyurethane spoiler. Um, and I purchased this spoiler off eBay for about 65 bucks. Uh, pretty economically priced and um, ships fast. Uh, the spoilers are made from uh, a company called Spoiler King. They make all kinds of spoilers, universal fit for all different types of cars and I just happened to find one that will fit the Mazda Protégé, the 2002 B16. Uh, so let me show you what the spoiler looks like and what you're going to be needing to paint this thing. Um, so here's the spoiler box from Spoiler King. Okay, and inside here is a um, just a rubber blade like spoiler. Get that out of the way. On the bottom side, you see a nice large piece of double sided sticky tape. Okay, um, this spoiler sticks up approximately maybe an inch and a half high. It doesn't look like it, but once it's installed on the car, it's it sticks up pretty nice and it gives the car a nice duck bill shape kind of adds a nice uh, kicked up sort of spoiler profile if you will to your to your car and uh, it actually looks nice on the protege um, now previously I already I had already bought one of these and painted it before and just to kind of get an idea of what it was going to look like and uh, I actually kind of screwed up the paint a little bit I won't be showing it but uh, because it's so terrible but uh, I bought one just to see how it would look on the car and it, it looks excellent. Um, matter of fact, a lot of the little lip spoilers that you see that fit on the trunk edge or trunk edge spoilers, they don't stick up high enough. This does just perfect. It gives just enough character to let you know it's there. Uh, sticks up high enough to add kind of a, you know, a swept up look, duck bill sort of look on the back of the car. Really looks great. And um, I'm going to be painting that today. So here's what I'm going to be uh, painting it with. Um, now there are various colors that you can use to um, kind of match the paint on your protege. Uh, my car uh, has the color code 22V which is the Arctic Bright Silver I believe or um, uh, Sun Bright Silver, excuse me. Um, but the matching paint that's closest is the, uh, it's a Honda color actually from Duplicolor and it's actually called Arctic Silver Metallic. The one on the car is called Sunbright Silver Metallic, I believe. And I got a couple of cans of that, okay. Um, but before I get started painting, um, but before I lay on the base coat, I'm um, gonna use some adhesion, uh, adhesion promoter here. And uh, before I even start doing that, here's some scuff and sand paste or scuff and prep paste. Uh, this is what you use to remove uh, mold release agents from the spoiler when it was molded into shape. And this also helps in scuffing up the spoiler to prepare the surfaces for paint and whatnot. You can pick this up. I, actually, this one I, um, I picked up at O'Reilly's and I think it was like nine bucks. Okay. Uh, this one is about $3.99. These cans are about four bucks a piece. And then for the clear coat, we're going to be using a two stage clear or 2K clear. This is um, Max Spray 2K Glamour uh, 680061. That's the number. Okay, uh, you got the button on the bottom for the, for the hardener. You just take that button and you hit on the bottom. I got two cans of this stuff. Now this stuff here is, you know, relatively very expensive, uh, about 25 to 27 bucks a can. Uh, I got two cans because um, uh, you may need to add uh, several coats of clear, depending on how glossy you want your spoiler to be. Okay, and um, I bought this just to help out uh, with the spray. It uh, actually does a very fine job of holding the can, so you can control the motion of the spray control the way the spray pattern is going and whatnot okay you're gonna need a resonator to protect your lungs and if you don't want to get paint all over everything you're gonna need some um, some painters plastic sheet uh, plastic sheeting that you can like spread around to keep paint from getting everywhere and um, here's some scuff pads I'm gonna be scuffing twice I'm gonna start with a 360 and I'm gonna end up with an 800 okay and then I got some scotch double-sided tape um, extremely strong tape for mounting things outside or heavy objects on a wall or something and um, that's the same stuff that you see on this red strip here on the bottom of this spoiler um, 
but uh, I actually got this um, so that I could um, uh, um, scuff this spoiler while it's standing up because as you see if you let go of it it just kind of wants to fall over so what I want to point out before you start mount this spoiler to say a piece of wood 2x4 or you know something uh, solid and then you're going to put another piece of double sided sticky tape facing downward and then mount it so you can um, scuff it and sand it and clean it up uh, to allow you to uh, uh, paint it because it's got to sit like this while you're cleaning it if not you know actually rather you could do that while you're painting it while you're cleaning it you're going to need freedom of moving to get to the back side so I would say wait until you add the, uh, the double sided tape before you do that so let's get started on this project um, tonight's today's a nice cool day uh, relatively warm around 78 degrees here in Florida absolutely beautiful weather I thought probably today would be a better day to do this than before it gets started getting a little too cold and the paint doesn't want to stick. Uh, painting in a cold is just, I don't know, it's just doing it different. So, um, so let's get started. Before the video gets too far, I'd like to take a quick minute and explain that while this may look very interesting, this certainly is not the way this type of spoiler should be painted. Yeah, I, I know. But at the time I filmed this, I was impatient and I wanted this to be a quick cheapo style mod that would look great. You know, just to see how it was going to turn out. The proper paint is supposed to be a rubberized paint, so in the future there will be a second series of videos showing the proper way to do this. But at least I got the surface preparation correct. Anyway, the first step in preparing the surface is to wet the spoiler to prepare it for sanding with a scuff pad. Next, use the 360 grit scuff pad with sanding paste to clean the spoiler and roughen the surface to allow the base coat to stick. You'll want to sand lengthwise so all of the scuffing lines will face the same direction. Once done scuffing, rinse with water. Here I'm applying an alcohol based cleaner to dry out the spoiler. This is one of the final steps before the base coat application. What all this does is remove any mold released agents and waxes from the part. If you don't remove it, the paint simply won't stick. Before the base coat, you can see me applying an adhesion promoter to the spoiler. This should help the base coat lay on more even and stick better.
Now this is an old trick that can be used when painting from aerosol cans. Typically, I like to soak my cans in moderately heated water. This does two things. First, it increases the pressure in the can, and second, it helps atomize the paint mixture better. You don't want scalding hot water, but it needs to be slightly warmer than, say, lukewarm. Too hot, and the cans can burst open, creating a very ugly mess. Before laying on the base coat, shake the cans for mixing the paint. Two to five minutes of agitation should do it. By using the handle gun, you can see how important spray pattern and control is. I don't think I would have attempted this without the spray handle. Its design helps obtain consistent strokes and coverage and keeps the paint off your index finger. You can see coverage was pretty good and the paint was laid on pretty smooth. But an outdoor paint job wouldn't be proper without an occasional dirt nib or two, or three. So this calls for some wet sanding on the base coat followed by some touch up before the clear is laid on. I'm wet sanding with 1000 grit sandpaper as the dirt nibs are relatively small, but you can still see them. Sanding with 1000 grit ensures that too much base coat won't be rubbed away during the smoothing process. I use the same trick from earlier on the clear coat cans. It works wonders for the base coat, but it really shows up in the clear. The only minor difference is that the labels peeled off the cans. With about three minutes worth of shakes, smash the red button, mix again, and you're ready to clear. The strokes are pretty much the same when applying the clear, but the speed of the layering is slightly faster to prevent runs. Once this clear coat flashes and has had enough time to dry properly, I'll show you in part two of this video how to install the spoiler with factory-like precision. Stay tuned. 